Hi, this is Joe Swartz from AmHydro. Welcome to our January webinar. And today we're going to talk about IPM, or Integrated Pest Management, and how that relates to your controlled environment ag operation. IPM is a, a term we hear a lot about, and what that really generally refers to is a very comprehensive and multi-leveled approach to pest control, both insect and disease control, which is a very important part of our CEA operations. Unfortunately, many growers tend to look at pest control as a as-needed uh, growing protocol. And what we have to look at is, is that integrated pest management and pest control in general is a critically important part of our daily operations. In controlled environment agriculture, the, probably the biggest economic loss that, that growers face is caused by insect or disease uh, problems. So it's very, very important to understand that this is a, a critical daily part of our growing operations and that insect and disease uh, issues are going to come up regardless of where you are, regardless of what type of technology you're using, this is part of our agricultural process. So since we began growing crops for our food production, we've always had problems with insects and diseases, and that will never change. So it's very, very important to look at what we do here in uh, our controlled environment ag space to minimize losses or issues related to those. So I've been a grower for, it will be 36 years in January, and I've been a consultant. I've been lucky to travel all over the world and work with growers uh, of all sizes. And basically the problems and challenges that they have are very, very similar all across the board. And pest management and pest control is definitely one of the biggest. So I've developed what I consider to be kind of the golden rule of controlled environment agriculture. And it's very, very simple, but it's very important. And that is that you as a grower need to spend time in your crops. You need to spend time on a daily basis here in your greenhouse or in your grow space and to be understanding exactly what's going on at all times. There are many great technological tools. I have seen some phenomenal uh, optic and camera devices that will monitor crops. We have uh, sensors, we're always collecting data points. We're able to use electronic uh, data sensing to really understand much better what's going on in the crop, but nothing will replace you as a grower and people who work in your growing operation from always working with the crop and, and observing and understanding what's going on. Now here today we're in the Humboldt County Office of Education greenhouse. So when I talk about pests, I will be referring as a generic term to insects and diseases. And when I refer, or if I usually will refer to a greenhouse, this could also mean your indoor grow space. So all of the principles of integrated pest management are universal, regardless of where we are, or even specifically how we grow. So it's very important to remember that, and to be able to take these principles and incorporate them directly into your specific growing operation. So we have to always remember that scouting, observation, identification, and swift decisive action are critically important to your properly managing pests within your grow space. And what we have is what we have, what I call the seven fundamentals of integrated pest management. So these are very important and please look at them and see how they would fit into your specific growing operation. So of the seven, the first and most important or the, the, the most fundamental is exclusion. So we focus on making sure we do everything that we can to keep insect and disease pests from coming into our grow space. It's easier said than done, but there are many strategies and technologies that we can use to help as best we can. One note is that some uh, growing operations will say because they're indoors that insects and diseases cannot get into the grow space, and that's absolutely false. Insects and diseases will come in anywhere at any time. So what we wanna do is use the technologies and mechanisms to minimize the infiltration into our grow space. And so here in the uh, Humboldt County Office of Education greenhouse, we have a specific insect screening over all ventilation surfaces. So basically anywhere where air is being drawn into the grow space, there are screening materials that are designed specifically to uh, limit uh, insect infiltration. One thing to note is that when you install these types of screens, they do have a certain static pressure. So they will minimize or lower the amount of air that can move within the greenhouse. So it's very, very important to size your ventilation um, structures accordingly so we can account for that static um, pressure loss coming through the greenhouse. 
The access door in the greenhouse where people come and go is also a very common place where insects can, or disease organisms can come through. So it's important that your doors operate properly, are sealed properly, and a common foot bath that usually has some type of disinfectant is very important and it's a good tool to minimize disease uh, organisms and even dirt that comes into the greenhouse. Um, also exclusive clothing is important. So for anyone visiting the greenhouse and for certain growing operations, it may make sense to have overclothes, some type of coveralls, foot coverings, hair nets, etc. cetera. Uh, certainly a must for any visitors that may come into the greenhouse, also for employees. For most commercial operations, what we recommend is that we actually have separate clothing for greenhouse employees. So when people come into a grow space, they actually have a separate set of clothing that is exclusive to the growing environment. Um, constantly, we have insects coming in on people's clothing. Uh, I was at recently a, a farm tour on a con conventional farm where visitors who were walking around an alfalfa field were coming into the greenhouse for a greenhouse tour and their clothing, their, their shoes and their pant legs were covered with aphids. So we want to make sure that any type of insects that are coming in on the clothing that we can minimize that. As it relates to visitors, this is a, a tricky one for most growers. From a food safety and a production standpoint, I recommend limiting visitors to a very bare minimum. It is important sometimes to allow people from the press, dignitaries, investors, etc., to access to come into the greenhouse. Here, as an educational institution, again, people come and go a lot. So having a visitor policy that limits the amount of uh, people coming and going is important. It's unfortunate, but it is important. Also critically important is no foreign plant material. And I know this sounds very much like common sense. I can't tell you how every year someone will tell me that their mother-in-law wanted to store their poinsettia in your greenhouse for the winter and you bring it in and all of a sudden you have white fly in your tomatoes. Very important to have a zero tolerance policy for any exterior plant material to come into your grow space. And lastly is a swift and decisive removal of infected material. If in your grow space you see insect infestations, you see disease infestations, removing them aggressively immediately is very important. I myself have made this mistake. You look at it, things don't look quite so bad. You think, well, maybe I can correct the problem. These plants will be okay. It's kind of an emotional uh, decision. You kind of don't want to have that, uh, that economic loss of throwing plants away. Trust me, removing any infected material will go a long way in keeping insect or disease infestations from spreading. So that's exclusion, first, foremost, but it's only the first step. Our second fundamental is our cultural practices. So these are the different things that we do in our day-to-day -day operation that will help us minimize insect and disease infestations. And our environmental control is an important one. Maintaining proper uh, temperature, humidity control, carbon dioxide, things like that, proper nutrition. These are all really important tools, not only for our general production, but also resistance to insect and disease pests. So it's very important to keep our temperature and our environmental parameters where they need to be. Keeping a clean greenhouse is also one of the most important things that we can do. Um, every day as we work within our plants, plant material makes it on the floor, things come in and out of the greenhouse. It's very, very easy to allow of debris to build up. This is a common vector for especially disease uh, but also insect pests. So it's very important every day to constantly be cleaning your greenhouse surfaces, sweeping the floors, wiping down the walls, keeping the growing surfaces clean. Very important. In addition to that, scouting is important. This is kind of goes along with that the golden rule of Controlled Environment Act. Understanding while you're working within the crops, understanding what's going on at all times is very important. And this is what your first line of defense, this is where you're going to first see insect or disease uh, infestations. So it's very important to inspect your crops, but also to train your, your growers and your employees to observe the crops. So when you're transplanting or you're harvesting or doing other tasks in the greenhouse, it's very easy to kind of get stuck and tunneled into that one activity. Train your people to work on being observant as to what's going on. So when, when growers are transplanting, for example, to give the plant a visual inspection, this is really the first time that many people will see some type of evidence of insects or disease. So it's very important to understand what's going on in your crop and to, just to incorporate this into daily practices will help you get a leg up on any type of infestation. 
Now, one of the other things that people talk about is with pest control, which is the, a biological insect control program, or a, sprayer, a spraying program, is that they look at it as needed. So they don't incorporate it into, that, into their daily activities. That's a mistake. A regular biological insect con and disease control program is something that I recommend that you start from day one. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna understand which types of insects and diseases may be more common to the types of crops you're growing. So once we understand that, we may want to introduce different predators and parasites that will go after those certain insect pests or incorporate different practices that will help minimize disease issues even before we see them. So bringing in certain predators, for example, uh, I'll be showing you in a few moments some different predators such as Hypoaspa swirsky, which is a predator of thrips and spider mites. And incorporating those into your growing operation from the beginning will give you a leg up on any potential infestations. Trapping is the third and, and also a very important part of our in integrated pest management program. We have yellow sticky cards, we have different types of pheromone lures and traps that we want to trap any insects that may be in the greenhouse. Um, also related to that is certain cultivars, certain crops are more susceptible to certain insects or diseases. So you'll see evidence of an infestation earlier on these crops or on these plants. And so understanding what those look like will help you to determine if there's an infestation coming on. Fortunately, most insect and uh, disease infestations will give you some clues and show up in small subtle places first. So the sooner you address them, the better off you will be in minimizing any damage to your crops. Among the most common questions that I get from growers is identification of insect or disease presence. And they can see maybe there's an anomaly in the crop, some type of symptoms that are showing up, but they're not quite sure what that is. And it's very important to identify that and deal with that as quickly as possible. And as you develop experience as a grower, you'll start to understand and identify certain things. Certain insects um, have a certain appearance. Even if you don't see the insects, sometimes the evidence of their feeding um, is quite obvious. And once you develop some, uh, some time in as a grower, you'll be able to identify them. But especially with newer growers, you may not be able to identify them. So it's important to get expert guidance. Uh, we have many resources. There's many resources online. Am Hydro has a, a very experienced team sending photographs or video of anything that looks unusual is valuable. We also have many great biological companies um, and consultants that are available. Charlie McKenzie of Crop Walk Consultants is a great IPM consultant, can come into your growing operation. We also have companies like Copert Biologicals, Sound Horticulture, and BioBest, which have great online resources and, and also great teams of entomologists. But certainly Am Hydro is available at all times um, to, to help guide you through those early stages of identifying what may be in your greenhouse and causing problems with your crops. So it's very important as soon as you see something that doesn't look right to get proper identification. And then with proper identification, we can make corrective actions. One of the, also one of the more valuable components that people tend to avoid is aggressive removal. Once you see some type of insect or disease pressure in your crops, people tend to hold on to them in the greenhouse. Sometimes even before you fully identify what's going on, if you see an infestation that's severe enough, it's very important to remove as much of that as possible from the grow space because as uh, an insect or a disease infestation begins to grow, it can develop and grow exponentially and very quickly, especially under good growing conditions. So it's important to remove as much infected plant material as possible immediately. I myself have made this mistake. I wanna hold something in the greenhouse because I think I can correct the problem and then still go ahead and sell those crops. And in most cases, that's not true. So once you see something that doesn't look right and we determine that there's something, whether it's an insect or disease, removal, aggressive culling, we call it, is um, definitely warranted. Now, once we identify something, we know what's going on, that's only part of the process. Now we need to be able to treat accordingly what we're, what's going on in the greenhouse. And our treatments, basically all of these components, whether we're talking about insects or diseases, um, most of the treatments and uh, components are very, very similar. So our treatments, um, we have a number of different things that we can do, and it depends on what you have, and it depends on what, what growing practices. When we think of treatments for pest infestations, normally one of the most common thoughts goes to spraying 
Spraying pesticides, of course, has been used in our agricultural practices for a very long time, and it is for many growers a viable means of pest control. Myself, I have chosen to grow without using pesticides, and most of our growers utilize some type of pesticide-free or biological pest control program. So treatment using pesticides, using conventional materials or organic pesticides is certainly an option, and that's completely up to you. For biological treatment, we have a couple of different options, one of which is in incorporating predators or parasites. And these are other insects that basically will go after insect pests in your greenhouse. And it, they can be very effective as both a preventative program, but also as a treatment. So if we were to have, say, an infestation of a certain insect, um, and once we've identified it, we have many different biological tools to bring in at kind of what we call a treatment level to, to handle that infestation. Uh, we also have biological agents for disease control, for example, different biologicals such as Bacillus subtilis, which is a great treatment for diseases such as powdery mildew, and other um, cultural agents such as potassium bicarbonate, which coat the coating of the leaf and create a very inhospitable uh, environment for diseases such as powdery mildew. So once we identify the pest problems that we're dealing with, we have many different options in terms of biologicals that can be introduced, as well as different sprays that we can use. So that's completely up to you. Certainly expert guidance can help you with your own particular situation. So we want to look at our maintenance program and we want to make sure we follow through that as specifically to whatever pests we have been dealing with. And we also want to be much more aggressive with our scouting and our observation. Generally speaking, any infestations of insects and diseases don't simply go away all at once. They tend to, we tend to lower the populations and then there's always a potential for flare up So it's very important to stay the course and to stay on a, a very regimented program or follow-up. So once we do all that, we're not finished. This is a continual process. So we basically are going right back to the beginning and we continue to follow this process throughout our crop production. The ideal situation is that our exclusion and our proper cultural practices and our trapping and our, all of the maintenance procedures that are part of our integrated press management program, as long as we maintain that and we stay with that constantly and follow it diligently, generally speaking, most insect or disease infestations will be kept to a minimum. However, things definitely pop up, things change. This is a very dynamic industry and with that we have to be ready at any time to respond quickly and aggressively. Incorporation of proper integrated pest management practices is one of the most critically important factors in your success as a grower. Please don't take it lightly, incorporate it into everything you do, and I guarantee you'll be better off for it. Go online at amhydro.com and use the code GREENPLAN and you can receive half off our small business plan. Save yourself $125 and grow your way to success. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next month.